The very first tip around self-love is making a commitment to fitness. That's right. Now, I'm not talking about the fitness that you see on Instagram. I'm talking about finding your level of fitness, which could simply be going for a morning walk every day, maybe hopping in the pool and doing laps, committing 20 to 40 minutes every day to stretch and meditate. Maybe it is lifting weights, or maybe it's just tennis. It's scientifically proven that if we get 30 to an hour every single day of movement, that what are we? We're happier. We have better mobility. We have better flexibility. We sleep better. We can release dopamine, which is going to increase our happiness. We're going to sweat in most cases, most cases, which is going to go ahead and get rid of toxins, right? So if you're looking to establish more self-love in your life right now, the challenge I have for you is to simply commit to fitness. Not to the fitness you see on YouTube or Instagram or TV, but to the fitness that works for you. That's it. You know, if you're one of those people and you're really shy, you're, you you want to get out in the, in the fitness industry and, and do some work, start working out, but you're shy. Maybe you're afraid of being judged. Maybe you feel like you're too overweight or not flexible enough or you feel like you're not good enough. I want you to, to understand in my book, Free Your Energy, the very first chapter, what is it called? It's called Breaking Up with the I Am Not Enough Mindset. Now, I'm not telling you that it's going to be easy, but I don't care about easy or hard. I care about creating the life that I want, and I know that you care about the same thing, too. You have to break up with the I am not good enough mindset. You just have to say, fuck it, I'm going. I'm going. I'm going to do it. Why? Because I need to take care of me. I need to value me, and I want others to value me. So the way I create that is by valuing me first, with my actions first. The next tip around creating self-love for you today is you have to learn how to set healthy boundaries. Now, I'm going to give you a tip. A lot of people, now I wrote a book called Care Package, all right? And in that book, chapter, uh, I believe chapter three or chapter four, People Pleasing and Setting Healthy Boundaries, right? Came out June 4th, 2018. It's been one of the best-selling books in the world on healing and on setting boundaries. So I'm going to give you one of the tips from the book. A lot of people, I look at everyone's content. A lot of people, they're talking about setting boundaries with other people, and that's great. But what does my content always tell you to do? My content always tells you to introspect. My content always tells you to look within first. Before we start blaming others, before we start putting the energy on others, we have to look within, right? So I'll be vulnerable with you and I'll be honest with you. One of my biggest struggles is I'm the, I'm the cookie monster. I'm not even gonna lie to y'all. I'm the cookie monster. I will go ahead, instead of eating one cookie, I'll eat 10 to this day, right? I love, I love cookies. I love snacks. I eat healthy, but I love my snacks. And I probably love the snacks because I eat healthy. But what I have learned to do is to understand that I cannot eat the whole box of cookies. It's not healthy for me. I can't eat the whole box of cookies in one sitting. It's not healthy for me. So before I start looking out into my life, figuring out who I need to set a boundary with, and I need to keep this person away from me and keep that person away from me, that doesn't work until you set a healthy boundary from within first. So I, I, I named something silly like cookies, but it's not silly to a person that can't control it. It's not silly to a person where those type of things literally rule their life. And for me, at one point, it did rule my life. And what I had to learn was that I have to set healthy boundaries. So this may sound crazy. This may sound crazy, but I know that if I want, if I want a cookie, Right. And I'm on my fitness plan. I'm on my meal plans. I'm working out. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm trying to stay good. If they sell the cookies in six and I know that I, for my caloric intake, I can only take two. I'll buy the box of six and throw the other four away. I mean, if someone's around me, I'll give them the four. But I know, hey, I can only have the two. I can only have the two. Right. So that's just a small example of how you can how you can set a healthy boundary with you. Now, the easy thing to, just, to do is to say, oh, just don't touch it at all. Well, that's real easy to say on the outside looking in. 
And so what I want people to do is to simply understand that whatever it is you're struggling with, I'm not going to tell you, oh, just stop doing it. Because it, it, it just doesn't work that way for people. All I'm going to say is try to limit it. Try to try your best to be intentional about how you use it, whatever it is, or wherever you're spending that time. Now, someone's going to ask, how do you set healthy boundaries with people? Let's talk about family. You know, a lot of the times we guilt ourselves with our family members because we're like, oh, well, that's my family member, so I have to duh, 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 duh because of love. And Man, look, I'm going to just be honest with you. There's nothing more important than my mental health. I'm not ruining my mental health for anyone. I'm not ruining my mental health for a job. I'm not ruining it for an apartment complex. I'm not ruining it for Instagram. I'm not ruining it for a family member. I need to be happy and understand I can't be happy all the time because things happen, I get disappointed, uh, things don't go my way. I understand that that's a part of life. There's frustration, there's anger, there's other emotions that are important and that matter and that should be acknowledged. But mostly, I need to be happy. <laughs> the majority of the time, I, I think I should be happy. So if you are a family member and every time I see you, you ask for $20, that doesn't make me happy. It doesn't. I'm going to set a healthy boundary with you and I'm going to let you know. You ask to borrow money every single time I see you, right? You don't know anything about my life. You don't know anything about my financial situation. I don't feel obligated to give you $20. I don't. So the last time was the last time. Next time, there will be no next time. Don't ask me. I'm not here to enable your inability to take care of yourself. You're an adult. You are. You are an adult, and I'm not here to enable you. I'm also not here to break my back for, for you guys when you're not trying to break your own back for yourself. That doesn't even make sense to me. You know, the people who get the most help in life are the people who help themselves the most. It's that simple. The people who get the most help in life are the ones who help themselves the most. So if you want help, if you want people to be there for you, if you want support, you want love, and all this other stuff that I see people post about on the internet, you need to give it to yourself first. You need to create it for yourself first. You need to establish the culture of what you want other people to give to you. People give to me all the time, every day. But it's because I have created that for myself first. And I'm not, I have healthy boundaries set. I'm not taking shit from anybody. I'm not, I don't allow anyone to treat me crap like crap. I don't allow my mother to treat me bad. I don't allow any family member to treat me bad. Any, any co-worker I've worked with, I don't allow anyone to treat me bad. Why? Because I treat everyone with respect and, I, and I'm tactful with everyone. I listen to people's ideas, even if we don't agree, because we don't have to agree. I listen. I try to understand where people are coming from, and so people give me that same energy back. I don't leech on people. I don't beg people for, for money, for, for anything. I stay in my lane. I, I control what I can control, and I set healthy boundaries with myself first and then others second. And so no one is going to treat me poorly because of that. That's how you create self-love. You have to give it to yourself first, right? Now, the third tip I have for you is a lot of you have to change your perception with letting go. Now, when I talk about letting go, I'm not talking about letting go of people. I'm talking about letting go of ideas. A lot of the reasons that you guys don't have self-love is because you are attached to ideas that don't help you. You are attached to insecurities that don't help you, that you're choosing to keep around. You're attached to beliefs that don't help you, outdated beliefs that literally hurt you. You have to examine. And I can't tell you what ideas to break up with because we have different lives. We live in different countries. We, we care about different things. I'll tell you what I care about, though. I care about free will and feeling like I have free will. I care about the power of choice. I care about the power of choice because I know that I have a choice with how I want to feel, with how I want to behave, how I want to perceive the world, and how I want to act in the world. I have a choice with all of that. And I care about growth mindset. I care about feeling like I can grow out of a situation, even if I lose. If my camera breaks, my iPhone breaks, my book stops selling, I, I lose my voice and I can no longer write, I can no longer do my job, I, in me, I have to figure out how I can adjust. I have to figure out what else I can do. I have to figure out what other skills I can develop. Self-love is having a flexible mindset. Self-love is adjusting. 
Self-love is letting go of my life has to be this way and I have to only do this one thing and it has to go this way and if it doesn't go this way, I'm upset and I'm depressed and I'm crying and I'm in tears. Self-love is having the ability to adjust. It's saying, okay, this didn't work the way I wanted it to work. How do I learn from this situation? What can I do to get better from this situation? What mentor do I need to enlist to learn from them? Who do I need to watch so I can see? Right? Who, what book do I need to read that's going to give me valuable information, uh, give me valuable stories that I can reflect from and learn from so I can just simply get better? You know, you guys get so defeated when things don't go your way. You know, that's not how life works. That's not self-love. Self-love is not, oh, I lost, so that's just it. I hate my life. Huh? Bro, <laughs> that's not how it works. You gotta, you gotta let go of that mindset. Oh, I'm unworthy, I lost, so it's like, oh, my life sucks. No, no, that's not reality. You took an L, it's okay. Like, losing is fine. <laughs> losing is okay, it's literally like any successful person, I'm a successful person, and any successful person will tell you that failure and losing occurs more than the success. Like, you think, <laughs> you think it's just about to be all successful? <laughs> Where? Like, you need to be okay with learning and adjusting, losing. That's how you get better. Now, in conclusion, self-love is a very, very, uh, very, very vast topic. There's a lot of different avenues, uh, a lot of different things to talk about when it comes to self-love. I hope you got value out of these three tips uh, three tips that I gave you today that I personally use that I think are very important. I'll tell you those tips again in case you forgot. The three tips are you want to commit to a fitness plan. Commit to that, that physical fitness plan. Be very intentional uh, about your body, about movement. The second tip is you want to commit to setting boundaries. He set healthy boundaries. And don't worry about setting healthy boundaries with everybody else first uh, because that's kind of draining. You want to master yourself first. So you want to set healthy boundaries with self first. You know, like I told you, I'm the cookie monster, right? So I got to make sure that I understand, hey, bro, two cookies, that's it. <laughs> Shut it down, right? And then the third thing is you want to you wanna change your mindset with letting go. Letting go of ideas. Because it's, it's ideas run the world. That's all it is, is ideas and actions run the world. That's literally, when you look at the world, you look at what people tweet, look at my post, look at what your boss says to you, look at what your husband and your wife says to me. You guys are on Tinder and... Um, What's the other one? Uh, these dating apps. I don't even know the apps' names. But you guys are on these apps. All it is is behavior and ideas. That's it. Literally, that's all the world is. There's it's nothing outside of that. Behavior and ideas. That's it. So when you start understanding that there are some behaviors and ideas you have to let go of, you free yourself. You free your energy. You heal yourself. You become your own care package. It's that simple. Life is simple. We, we overcomplicate it with our thoughts our expectations, and we let we hold on to too many ideas and to too many behaviors. Simplify your life. I'm telling you. I'm speaking from experience. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Free Your Energy podcast. If you guys are hearing this and you want to see, you want to see my mannerisms and see how animated I get, you can follow me on YouTube, youtube.com. Just type my name in, Sylvester McNutt III. There's only one, all right? I'm the only one in the world. Now, for you guys who are seeing this on Instagram TV or YouTube, if you want to keep me in your pocket and you just want to hear my voice day to day, maybe have me playing in your background, find the Free Your Energy podcast. It streams on iTunes, SoundCloud, and Spotify. All right. I want to thank you guys for your time today. Feel free to let me know if you got value out of this. Share this one with a friend. There's so many more episodes you can go listen to. Now, the tips I gave you came from my two books. I have a book on healing called Care Package. All right. In Care Package, we talk about healing, letting go, for, letting go of pain, people pleasing, codependency, um, how to keep loving, how to keep living, how to keep staying in the moment. Care Package, a path to deep healing. And in my brand new book, Free Your Energy, whoo, that book will free your energy. I'm telling you. A lot of you are enslaved with ideas, but Free Your Energy will help simplify everything. The very first chapter of Free Your Energy is called Break Up With the Mindset of I Am Not Enough. If you do that right there and you follow what that book tells you, the rest of life is easy. Because I believe that once you heal and once you free yourself, life is easy. 
All right, if you want to get care package or free your energy, visit my website, sylvestermcnutt.net or amazon.com. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Free Your Energy Podcast. Free Your Energy.